The pages panel is another resource that you can use to either view what you have page wise or to add pages, delete pages, you can reposition pages and in the previous videos I kind of showed you that you could see the pages on the pages panel but I showed you how to add pages via the via the menus bar. I actually, my personal preference is that it's easier to do this on the pages panel and so we're going to do that mostly in my demos via the pages panel. And so the first thing you need to know about the pages panel is that there's kind of a top half and a bottom half and there's a bar that runs across the difference. And so the top half of the panel, they're not real pages. They're what are called master pages. They're used to do template driven designs. And so if you had, let's say, a blue header that went across the top of your newsletter on every single page, instead of creating a blue header on every page, um, you would create one on the master page and say, now apply that master page to all the rest of the pages. And you can see that the one master page that you have right now is highlighted as a master. Oh, excuse me, I got the hiccups. Um, and so if you look at the actual pages that are listed, there's a capital letter A on each one. That's saying that these pages are linked to a master page. And so in the previous video, I said that even though you don't know what a master page is, um, every page that you create in your document is linked to a lowercase master page, a master page. Um, in this case, it happens to be the capital letter A master page. Um, you can change it though. You could make more. You could have a B master or a C master or a D master. You could even override it and say that you want none. And so up here, you can see that there's a none master page. You do not want a master page linked to any of your pages. And so if you drag and drop this little page icon onto page one or page two or page three, that capital letter will disappear. We're going to do an entire lecture on pages and master pages and booklets and things like that about three quarters of the way through the semester. So that's all I'm going to touch in regard to master pages. The more important thing to focus on right now is the bottom half of your pages panel. And that's everything below the little bar that you see that splits the top and the bottom half. It's not really half. It's like 20% the top and then 80% the bottom. And so you get a visual of your pages, and so immediately you should be able to say that is a booklet. You're making a facing page document because page one is on the right, and then pages two and three create a spread, and then page four is on the left. And so this is a four-page booklet or newsletter or something like that that's going to be folded and bound and made into a book. If you had a long skinny column that didn't have any right and left-hand side pages, you should be able to say, well, that's a non-facing pages document. Um, when you are ready to start playing around in InDesign, um, there are three buttons at the bottom right hand corner that you should memorize what they do. I'm going to start at the right hand side because they're kind of in the order that you'll use them the most. So there's a trash can in the bottom right hand corner and that is the delete um, option. And so if you select a page and you don't want that page anymore, you can hit the trash can and you can delete it. Some people like to drag and drop the page onto the trash can. That's too much work for me, so I'll just click it and then click the trash can, but either option should work. The second button from the right-hand side, it looks, if you look at it closely, it looks like a little piece of paper with the corner turned up. Whenever you see that icon in Adobe software, it means new, and because it's on the Pages panel, it means a new page. If it was on the Layers panel, it would be a new layer. If it's on the Swatches panel, it would mean a new color swatch, etc. And so if you select that icon, it's like choosing add page because whatever page you have selected if you're on page four which is what is selected right now and you hit the new page icon it will add one new page after page four you can hit that a bunch of times really fast if you want to but you'll be adding one page at a time now the third button the one that's highlighted in blue I'm going to caution you on um, for one very specific reason it only applies to the single page that you have selected and so if you use this edit page size button to change the size of your document um, you're only changing the page that you have selected or the pages you have selected. So for example, if I go back to InDesign and I am working on this booklet and I decide that it's going to be a four page newsletter that is eight inches by ten inches, I can use my pages panel to make those adjustments. And so we created this this document in a previous video and right now it is uh, seven by nine. And it's also, if I count the pages here, it's 16 pages. And so we can delete pages we don't want. And so you could select, let's say, page 11 and hit the trash can. And it will delete page 11. Now you can see there's 15 pages left in the document. You could then click page 7 and delete it, and page 10 and delete it. You could even select page 13, and then come up here and select page 5. And you could delete them all at once. And then you can get your document down to be just four pages. 
Now I could, this is where I'm going to caution you, I could select all of the pages in the document, or even just one page, let's say page three, and use this edit page size button and change the page size. And so if the size that I want is not listed, so I want eight inches by 10 inches, and I don't see that on the list, you can come down to custom. You can choose a name. I'm gonna, I like to make my names literal. See how these are the custom names that I created? These are literal. I know that if I select this one, I have three and a quarter by two and a quarter. And so when I choose custom and I give it a name, I'm going to make it eight inches by 10 inches. And make sure you also make the width and height eight inches by 10 inches or else that's a little confusing. And when you select OK, one, it changed the page size, but also it's now on the list. And so if I wanted to change the other pages, I could. However, by changing page three, I still have page one, page two, which you can visually see is a different size, and page four, that they are the original size of the document. And so you might logically say to yourself, okay, well, I'll just repeat that for the other pages, right? So select page one, change page size to eight inches by 10 inches. Now it's bigger and it's fine. Select page two. This is the one we should see visually get bigger and line up with page three. Could select that page, change page size, make it eight by 10. And then we can even repeat that one more time for page four. And now they're all happy and they're all eight by 10. However, InDesign still thinks if we go to File and Document Setup that your document is seven inches by nine inches. This causes problems because if I add a new page, let's say that instead of having a four page booklet, I wanna have an eight page booklet. So I hit the new icon four times, one, two, three, four. Now if I look at my pages, they're not all the same size. So pages one through four, eight by 10. But page five, this is my new page over here on the right hand side, it defaults back to the original that's seven inches by nine inches. Because when you use the edit page size button, you are only creating an instance example of the change. It doesn't apply to the whole document. It's not like a universal setting that you're changing. And so if I really wanted my entire document to be eight inches by 10 inches, I would have to choose file, document setup, and make the entire booklet eight inches by 10 inches and now all the pages are the same size. Now because I had two different size pages, this happened and I can show you how to fix that. If we move this guy down. That's another lecture for another day. But now all the pages are the same size and if you add a new page, let's add page nine here, it's the same exact size as page eight. And so you're only gonna wanna use that edit page size button if something is different for some reason. So let's go back to a four page example. Whoops, if I deleted too many pages, so we'll add one more. So maybe on the back cover, you want to have a fold out panel. And so you want, um, you want to be able to fold something over that maybe has a coupon that you tear out of your booklet. And so maybe you need the last page to be wider so that it can have maybe a three inch flap that folds into the, into the booklet. And so instead of having an eight inch by 10 inch page, what you really need, if we go to add a custom size, is you need 11 by 10, because that's your eight inches plus the three inch flap. And so now you want that page to be longer than the rest. And you, can you see visually how it would it'd stick out further? Um, be careful though, because every sheet of paper has two sides. And so every sheet of paper has two pages. And so if I make page four longer, physically page three has to be longer because page three is the front side of page four on the sheet of paper. And so you'd have to come up here to page three and you'd have to also make that 11 by 10. And so they both have the fold out. Now that's a little bit more complex than I wanted to get into. We talk more about that in the advanced in design class. Um, but what you should know for our class is that the edit page size button is a way to change this page size, but it is only the instance of the page that you're currently editing on. If you want to change the entire document size, you have to go back to file and document setup.